the Lux One is our women's specific aluminum hardtail mountain bike. It's designed to suit a wide range of female riders looking to explore some single track. No matter where you ride, the Shimano 3x8 drivetrain will get you there. 24 gearing choices guarantee you'll find the right cadence and speed for any terrain. 27.5 by 2.1 inch tires are designed to grip the trail, so while climbing, cornering, and descending, you will stay right on target. The tires sit on tough double wall rims that will roll true no matter what you throw at them. 80 millimeters of front suspension will help you ride smoothly over rough trails with confidence and control. A wide handlebar helps with leverage through twisty trails and the integrated brake and shift levers keep your bars uncluttered. Mechanical disc brakes provide reliable stopping power. They'll bring you under control with a quick pull of the lever. Best of all, the Lux One ships Ready Ride, so with just four assembly steps, you can get to the trail and ride even sooner. The way you can like speed up so bad and you can stop right away, that's the amazing part. It's like so exciting. It's lovely. I was like a child. Mountain bikes is not comfortable for me for like shape of my body, but I didn't have any discomfort. I can, uh, you know, zip through this woods and not have to worry about breaking or slipping on any of the pine straw. Really impressed with uh, the shocks of the system, even going over the larger tree branches. Uh, really absorbed, really cushioned it. Uh, great handling around the turns. It was a really fun bike to ride. Classic 29er hardtail still exists, and we've made it better than ever before. The Overdrive 29-2 features a fully hand-built, hydroformed aluminum frame. This year we've added boost rear spacing to increase frame stiffness. We've also added through axles in the front and rear to enhance handling precision. As the name implies, this bike sits on 29-inch wheels that roll over everything in their path, making for a very efficient ride. These knobby tires sit on our own tough Blanchard rims to keep you riding smoothly for miles. They're tubeless ready so you can ditch the inner tubes and enjoy everything going tubeless offers. 
The SRAM 1x11 drivetrain eliminates the front derailleur and gives you a huge gearing range to get the perfect cadence and speed, no matter whether you're grinding up a long climb or blasting down your favorite trail. The RockShox Reba Fork offers 100mm of plush air sprung suspension. With rebound adjust, you can dial in the tune to stay in control on rough trails, and the lockout lets you climb efficiently on fire roads. Nothing compares to the stopping power of disc brakes, and these powerful Shimano hydraulic disc brakes will slow you down quickly and smoothly with an easy pull of the lever. Best of all, the Overdrive 29.2 ships ready ride, so with just four assembly steps, you can get to the trail and ride even sooner. Thanks for purchasing your new Royce Union bike. With proper care and maintenance, your bike will give you years of enjoyment. But before that first ride, you'll have to assemble it. We're here to help, so let's get started. First things first, let's open the box, remove all the protective covering. Only thing you'll need for this is a pair of scissors or wire cutters. Now let's grab the seat post and put in the seat tube. You'll notice the safety line. Make sure you put the seat post past the safety line and then you clamp it down. It may be tough. If it's too tight, you adjust the nut, but it needs to be a very snug fit. You should feel some pressure in, when it's on right adjustment. We now have the bike on the bike stand. If you don't happen to have a bike stand at home, you can use your box, place it sideways, and rest the bike on there. When placing this on the bike stand, we recommend using the seat post rather than mounting it to the seat frame or you'll damage the frame itself. Inside your bike box, you'll find a parts box with instruction manuals, a derailleur protector, left and right pedals, and tools needed for assembly. These are the tools needed that comes in the part box but to make your job a little bit easier, in case you have them at home, we recommend adjustable wrench, Phillips head screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, and a metric set of Allen keys. Next step is to mount the handlebars. Make sure the cables aren't tangled. This is pretty much how you want it to be. If this is not loose, you just need to undo this bolt for easy insertion of the bike. And there is a safety line, just like the seat post. Make sure you're below that and use a six millimeter Allen key, tighten that bolt. If you notice your handlebars are not in the proper position, like these are, there's two bolts. Always make sure you unloosen and tighten these evenly that could cause slippage and a crash. For this installation, we use six millimeter Allen key. Now rotate, once you loosen these two bolts, rotate the handlebars forward where these bends are pointed upward. Make sure when you tighten this down that the space between both these sides are even or it will cause the handlebars to slip. So always keep an eye on the space on both sides of the handlebars while you're tightening them down evenly. There we go. Now it's time to install the front wheel, but before you do so, you need to squeeze the brakes and pull out the noodle from the lever in order to have enough space to put the front wheel in. These notches right here needs to go on these notches once you install the bike wheel. These need to go in the grooves prior to locking them down. Be sure to get these nice and tight. Now that we have the front wheel mounted, it's time to go and reattach the front brakes. You may need some minor adjustments if the noodle does not fit back in the housing. What you would do is use a five millimeter Allen key, loosen this up slightly, hold on this cable while you do so, and you will pull some out. 
re-tighten this down and then should give you enough room to reattach your front brakes. Now that we have the wheel mounted, brake secure, it's always good to double check that the brake pads are correct. Comes in the factory already mounted, but that's too high. And if you ride this, it will rip a hole through the tire. So what we do is use our five millimeter Allen key and readjust this slightly. Make sure you place your finger underneath the brake pad so it don't slip all the way down. And you want to center it to the side of the rim where it's not touching the tire. Let's go ahead and check our work. Squeeze the brake lever. Make sure both pads are spaced and hitting evenly. Actually, this pad is touching the rim and this pad isn't. So we grab our Phillips head screwdriver and we adjust. Then press the brakes. The tighter you adjust this, you get more of a gap and make sure they are hitting evenly at the same time. There we go. Now both sides of the brake is hitting the rim evenly and spaced evenly apart. All the methods we have used to adjust the front brakes can also be applied to the rear brakes. If you don't feel comfortable with any of the adjustments we have made here today, you can feel free to visit your local bike shop. Now it's time to attach the pedals. There's markings on both pedals, R and L, meaning left and right. Please make sure the left goes on the left and the right goes on the right, or you will strip the cranks when attaching these. Hand tighten it and use an adjustable wrench at the end. and really make sure these are secure when attaching these pedals. Now it's time to move on to the right. This goes on clockwise as opposed to the left side which goes on counterclockwise. And tighten it and use an adjustable wrench to secure it in place. Now it's time to check your gears to make sure everything runs correctly. You want to stay on the gear side, pedal with your left, and shift gears with your right. If you don't happen to have a bike stand, you want to have one of your friends hold the rear of the bike while you can check these gears to make sure they run smoothly. If something does look out of place, feel free to go to your local bike shop to get everything adjusted correctly. Gears seem to be running smooth, and it's off to the next step. Make sure you put in a derailleur guard, use a Phillips head screwdriver, and take these screws out. This would help of a fall on this side of the bike. It'll protect the gears. After checking the gears to make sure everything runs correctly, it's time to move on and fill up the tires. On the RTT mountain bike, the tire pressure is on the sidewall. These are rated at 40 PSI. Also be sure that the arrow is pointing forward on both tires to make sure the travel is correct. Prior to taking your bike off the bike stand, double check to make sure the reflectors are adjusted properly. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver there's one in the front and there's one behind the seat. This one is a little loose. Just tighten it down and move on the back. Both are secure. Now it's time to take your bike off the bike stand. Last two things to check before hitting the trails is to check the handlebars. Make sure everything is adjusted correctly and in line. You want to keep in mind that these bent part of the handlebars should be facing upright. 
And the last thing before we hit the trails, the seat height should be just above the pelvis. When you're at completely down, your knee should be slightly bent. So bring this down, check where it's just above the pelvis. Lock it back up. Now we're ready for the open road.